Uh, we're going to presenting, be presenting what we know about collaborative technology and learning outcomes. So uh, I'll turn it over to Joan to begin. I have a brief period of time in which to set the stage and sort of give you some context. Most of this is going to be Mace talking about um, a, a, a scenario here at Case Western with Adobe Connect, right? That's correct. Okay, so what do we know about collaborative technologies? The way I want to frame this and set up the background for uh, Mace's presentation is to think about um, not just the technologies and the learning outcomes, but actually the underlying pedagogies and uh, learning strategies that touch on, are supported by, or associated with collaboration. And to begin with, I don't, um, I don't want this to come across as condescending, but I'm not sure that we all share a common understanding of what collaboration is. And I see this borne out when um, I, I see instructors say, yes, I want to see collaboration in my classroom. I know it's good for my students. Let's do a group project. And cooperative learning versus collaborative learning is a very different thing. And group work can be neither sometimes. But co cooperative learning, um, to me, would be back to this image on the front page. This um, image I put up there is called a photo quilt. And it was a project that was done in what I would describe a participatory um, individual participation and cooperative learning. So there was a prescribed goal, people knew what they had to do, there wasn't a lot of um, negotiation, they just did their thing and then it was pulled together by an individual who started the project. Collaborative learning t is different in the sense that in collaboration you often, um, true collaboration, I think, you're negotiating meaning, understanding value, understanding where the other stakeholders are coming from, where your co-collaborators are coming from, building trust. And while you have to do that in teamwork and it can cross over, thinking about that distinction when you're setting up an assignment or a project in a class to support a particular learning outcome, that distinction becomes important because it builds different skills and it addresses different learning outcomes. So if we're okay with that working definition of collaboration versus co collaborative learning versus cooperative learning, um, I want to talk about what we know about learning processes, what's effective. And um, this is just a little quick illustration of the classic um, passive learner, <laughs> passive passed out learner. <laughs> and I think it's become fairly accepted lately that the shift is towards engaging students more in their own learning, having them be responsible, having it be student-centered and active. Um, and collaboration certainly should bring that, should put that into play and bring that into the classroom. So other things we know from learning theory and, and um, successful effective pedagogies is that learning is social. Um, we've talked about active and student-centered. Authentic and situated. Students are a lot more motivated when they know that the work they're doing isn't busy work. That it's something that's either connected to the real world, as in they can see how it's applied, they're working with experts in the real world, but it's situated in something other than just an assignment. Um, it's effective to build on prior knowledge, and certainly in a group, you have the group's collective knowledge. Facilitating building on that is part of the strategy for effective collaboration. Um, learning that's problem and inquiry based. Um, the fact that in a group you are bringing together students with multiple perspectives and multiple learning styles. Um, the idea of reflection which can occur in a, in a collaborative process. At, certainly in portfolios, we associate reflection with portfolios, but there's reflection as a step in the collaborative process when ideas have been put forth, when decisions need to be made or negotiated for next steps, and um, getting frequent feedback. So a lot of what, what is in successful or effective learning strategies can exist and be put into place through a collaborative activity for students and affect some positive learning outcomes. Um, so here we have a collaborative setting. Um, very specifically about the collaborative process, again, the focus is on seeking meaning, understanding, and solutions as a group. So we're building um, very specific skills in a collaborative process or leveraging specific skills. And again, we're not always sure whether our students or even our instructors are, are clear about what that set of skills um, is. 
Um, so that's about learning outcomes really breezing through <laughs> because I think as we go along, the alignment of our technology options with those pedagogies and eventually identifying learning outcomes is what's going to make or break um, a successful um, implementation of a collaboration activity in, in the classroom or with a group of students. So one of the challenges here with uh, um, collaborative technologies, this is a site called GoToWeb20. This is one of, how many pages? Three pages, each jam-packed with those little icons that represent collaborative technologies. It's a fabulous site because it has filtered and collected, and there's, I cut out um, in this image a list of other kinds of technologies. This is just a good resource as an aside. But this gives you an idea of how much there is to choose from. So going back to my point about if you're looking at learning outcomes um, and achieving them, you need to know which is the right tool for the, ta for the job that you're um, trying to do. And answering these questions, which seem basic sometimes, but if you skip this step, it's where the surprise at the end is we don't know what worked or didn't work or it feels like it didn't work, but really clearly answering these questions, which I won't read to you, but knowing how you're going to, what indicators you have for um, success. Do you know what success looks like? Do you know what indications out of the collaborative process are going to indicate that you've achieved uh, a learning outcome? And um, I keep drumming this point home about aligning the functionality offered by the collaborative technology. When we survey our students, we ask them questions about whether they like, what level of technology they like in their courses, and often the response will be, I like a moderate level, I prefer none if it's not used well. And that's another point about using this myriad set of collaborative technologies to achieve learning outcomes. Um, so if we're going to breeze really quickly through the learning outcomes associated or potentially supported by collaborative technologies, blogs. Blogs are giving students voice. They're a place where in one um, course we're having faculty ask students to post film clips that demonstrate organizational behavior. They're giving each other feedback on those clips and they're demonstrating the success indicator there is whether they have chosen an appropriate clip to demonstrate understanding of a concept they were taught in class. They're very clear on how to grade that particular thing and they have to do it as a group. Group has to find the clips, has to um, assess, post, and provide context for them. Um, blogs bring up another aspect of assessment. We have a faculty member who realized that influence was another measure of success, something that we've never assessed. It's a new skill, it's a different skill, but in using blogs, seeing how many people responded to a particular group's postings. So influence, looking at new measures of um, assessment. The, um, I love this because this demonstrates to me the, the um, efficiencies that you can gain besides all of the other aspects of sharing in a wiki. Who hasn't had the nightmare of working on a project where things are emailed and you've forgotten what the subject line was? So here's the nice clean wiki approach if you can get people into it. Um, so I think how that ties into learning outcomes is there's a record of the process, there's a record of contributions. It is possible to see who's, who's contributing and to see how the whole group process evolved. And to consider grading or assessing not just individuals, but a group as an entity. Um, Twitter, we talked about social networking and the potential to create new groups to find resources to build on strengths to make connections. Um, Twitter is also being used as a very quick feedback mechanism. Um, I think that learning outcomes are affected by new partnerships, putting groups together that are unlikely groups. Um, this is a film collaboration project called Root Clip. Anybody, anywhere can participate in this. So you might have students who are working on a story. It's collaborative. You finish the next thing. It gets voted on by the community, so you're not acting as an individual. And so some of the impact on learning outcomes um, have to do with that group process and being able to articulate and stand up for your contribution to the group and here um, and participating in a voting process. Um, I think that it's advanced um, research and um, the, the access to data for, um, to 
to do group work, group projects. This is a very packed, um, uh, packed illustration, but basically a group can uh, be very agile and flexible in how they do a research project because of the, because of the collaborative technologies. Um, the virtual world has provided opportunities for remotely located teams. We have a student team who's working with remotely located team about, uh, or experts about pollution in Ithaca. And avatars were created that were not human so that they wouldn't bias the students in terms of stakeholders, identification. So there's all kinds of issues about identification and representation of yourself. And um, this was with a group of engineering students in an ethics and engineering course. Um, this is a, a portfolio and, you know, there are all these technologies during this day are being explored. Um, but I, I guess I'm going through these very quickly to say that each of them have a unique feature set that you can leverage to support those learning outcomes you're trying to achieve. And with a portfolio, there's so much in terms of feedback and reflection and, again, that evolution, have, enabling a student to see their own learning process in, act, in motion. Um, so the emerging outcomes from, from uh, that we know about, uh, about colla using collaborative technologies are that, we're, that students are starting to recognize new partnerships across disciplines with people beyond their instructor, that there are new sources, and that their peers are sources of knowledge and authority. And that's going to that student-centered um, learning piece. And that there is this notion of collective intelligence that as a group, that they will have a better outcome if they don't work separately, but rather struggle through the process of working together. Um, and then uh, those affordances of fast, agile data integration and analysis, and the fact that it's mobile. You could be working with teams or yourself be involved in a team and access the data, access each other from anywhere. And it's about the process, not just the end results. So we were talking about giving you a quick glimpse into the research. The areas of focus in the collaborative, uh, in looking at collaboration um, in learning, that the focus has been on the product. It's sort of here's the group, here's how they, and then skip the piece of our process and look at what they did, or how. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. How they. Um, it had that being in a group, and we'll hear this endlessly from our students, had an impact on them as individuals, individual learners. What's the new frontier is treating the group as a single cognitive system for study. And that's a new area of research for people looking at collaboration. And that's that idea of can we raise the IQ um, collectively, you know, the, the product. Um, and can groups co-create new mental models to construct knowledge? Knowledge construction is basic, you know, uh, constructivist theory is basic and part of active learning. How, uh, are there new ways that groups are interacting, not in that cooperative learning way, but in this collaborative learning way and with these new technologies? So that's sort of the intersection of those learning outcomes, the technologies, and where the research is headed. Um, and I think Mace is gonna talk about with the Adobe Connect, um, uh, scenario, something that here is an example of a validated finding that you can use when you're thinking about how to implement um, technology. That it's um, that at some point in a collaborative process, face to face is necessary, or it's really important and and advances process um, when you're in the, discussing results, hypothesis, etc. So if you're setting up a group project, enabling. You know, maybe you did everything in a wiki, but now there's important to get the group together face to face at some point, and especially with a remotely located team. So the bottom line question, if you're going to implement this, is how is the how is the technology going to create conditions for successful collaboration? And um, I love this image because I found myself more times than not staring at one of those Star Trek phones, trying to imagine the person on the other side when you're in a meeting. And I love that they've sort of done a primitive avatar thing there. Um, but here are just a lot of examples of what um, we do on the low end, the high end, to put in that face-to-face -face element. And the fact that they're sitting around, I love this, sitting around at the desk and they're, and they're not there, they're in Qatar. Um, or trying to share some popcorn across the screen. But that, that idea, which Mace will talk a lot more about, of presence, is a really critical thing in this collaborative process as well. Whew. 
<laughs> Tried to fly through that for you, so your time. Uh, this, uh, thank you very much, Joan. Sure. Uh, the thing about this presentation is probably Joan and I could teach a course in this, and each of us have about 15 minutes to get through it. So, <laughs> you know, and we're trying to keep on time. We have another session over this. So, uh, you know, that is, uh, that is an issue for us. But, Um, Joan was uh, sort of looking at the, um, the broad view of using uh, collaborative tools, and uh, we thought it would be um, interesting to you if you um, uh, would be focused on at least one collaborative tool. Um, luckily for everybody, uh, I just completed a survey last Monday of case students that are using Adobe Connect. We started to use Adobe Connect here about six months ago. And we just rolled it out and we gave it to everybody and we said, you know, go for it. And uh, I wanted to see uh, how, how students are using it, but more importantly, how is it being used in the classroom as a collaborative tool? So that's what my presentation is all about. This is hot off the presses. It's pretty much univariate because I didn't have, have time to do a lot of correlations, but that'll be interesting in and of itself. So anyway, we're going to look at Adobe Connect uh, uh, through the eyes of the students here. Um, Joan mentioned this uh, a little while ago. Uh, I always try to connect um, some of the research, the surveys, and the assessments that I do to some theories that are out there. Because if you, if you don't do that, frequently what you're doing is just sort of like grabbing at straws. And I found an interesting connection, certainly, between collaborative tools, collaborative technologies, and these three theories, and I'd like to talk a little bit about them before we get into the survey because it has a lot to do with, with uh, what we know about this. I think one of the most important things that we can talk about when we're dealing with collaborative uh, tools, collaborative technologies, is this idea of social presence. What is social presence? Well, it's the degree, degree of awareness of other people, whether you're in web conferencing, whether you're in a virtual world, whether you're, on the, whether you're on your cell phone or whatever. You have a conception of the person being there, okay? And uh, you also have the ability to communicate things like body language, inflection, voice tone, personal focus, a natural language, and get immediate feedback. Um, so uh, that's what I will uh, be referring to when I talk to, about social presence. And you'll see how this sort of uh, sequences through uh, when we look at other things. The other theory that I'm looking at when I look at collaborative tools and collaborative technologies is this idea of media richness theory. And on the one side there, you'll see that uh, I have an effectiveness scale from less effective to more effective in communication. And then we look at the uh, degree of richness of the media. And certainly, as Joan and other people have said today, the most effective means of communication is face-to-face. -face. And then we can sort of move down in the scale a little bit from telepresence. Joan just saw us, showed us a nice graphic of people with telepresence passing the popcorn. Video conferencing, which would include web conferencing, cell phone, email, and written documents. So we can go on a scale from richer mediums to leaner mediums. So what does that mean? Well, let's combine social presence and rich media. So if we look at lean media, we'll say that these things, remember, that's kind of like written documents, uh, the cell phone. Uh, those things are better for the quick transmission of information. Okay, And this is important, and when I summarize this, you're going to see where I'm, I'm going with this. Rich media, that's good for um, ambiguous tasks. And uh, that could be things like uh, negotiation, reaching consensus, and all those sorts of things. Um, so uh, keep this in mind as we move through. Okay, the other concept that we have to look at when we deal with collaborative tools and collaborative technologies is this idea of participation. Because you're not going to get what you want out of collaborative learning, project-based learning, and all these different pedagogies unless everybody participates. Now, I know for a fact in some classes that I've taught 
that students don't like to work in groups because there's this social loafing factor that they have that I don't have to work because I can hide. But the thing is, uh, in order to do it properly, everybody has to participate. Now there's an issue in a face-to-face -face class, and that is what? That is that only a few people participate, and you actually have about, what it, what's the scale, about five people in your class that actually dominate the class, so no one, uh, so the other students really don't get to participate. Uh, we, see, we see real improvement in this when we use things like a discussion board, and we have people that, you know, they're, they're required to, uh, to contribute to the thread and do those things. And you'll see students that you thought in your class weren't getting it, and you find out they were the most intelligent students in the class. And that's, that's seen time and time again. So if we look at Adobe Connect as a collaborative tool, a collaborative technology, what is it? Well, when we look back at the uh, rich media theory, it's a rich media because uh, it can communicate uh, all these uh, social presence skills that we have. It's synchronous. That has to do a lot with the feedback. It can modify and share documents. You can have group discussion and polling. You can have a remote presentation, and actually you can archive the materials. And again, that uh, has a lot to do with the way that you can feed back things to your students and say, watch this, this is what we discussed, this is what we did, uh, this is how we progressed, this is how we're doing things now. So it's an important feature. Okay. Uh, like I said, last Monday, uh, I completed the, uh, a survey. We had 92 students that participated. We had 10 foreign students. I was hoping that I had more than that because there are cultural differences in collaborative technologies. Uh, for example, Asian students like a lot more, um, and I'm generalizing here, but they like a lot more graphics in an interface than some other cultures like. So, uh, and also their collaboration style is different. And I was hoping to look at that, but I don't feel like I had enough students and I didn't have enough variation in the types of students to be able to do that. Hopefully in the next one I can. 42% of the uh, respondents were graduate students here at Case. It seems like uh, the graduate schools, the professional schools have really taken off on using Adobe Connect uh, for their classes. Uh, and these are just some example of uh, some of the classes that are using it, biomechanical engineering, sciences, Sciences, uh, they use a lot of techno technology here at Case. They're the ones that are going to be using the virtual worlds, and they're the ones that are using uh, media vision courseware, lecture capture, and all that sort of stuff. Business school are peer writing, crew, nursing, and graduate collaboration, students getting together to study. Okay. Um, this is going to, yes? What's a peer writing crew? Peer writing crew would, be, uh, we have, uh, here, uh, what's called SAGES, which is um, uh, our curriculum uh, that replaces, let's say, English 101, uh, having our students be able to write. So the peer writing crew, they get together and uh, they assess other people's writing. Okay. Um, here are some of the ways I ask students, how, do you, how are you using Adobe Connect? And, uh, one interesting way they're using it is they're viewing the lecture in the lab. And this is important later on, I'll talk about this. In other words, they're sitting in the lab and it's a long, narrow lab, and you can't see the front, you can't see the lecture. So the professor said, I want all of you to use your laptops and we're going to put this in Adobe Connect and you're going to be able to listen to the lecture better. Okay? So that's one way they're using it. They're actually using web conferencing and a collaborative tool to learn about collaboration. Hmm. Okay, they're using it for the usual things like group projects, group assignments, uh, to review documents uh, when they're on a conference call. They're using it to communicate uh, with their advisor to get advising online. Uh, and, uh, and, and you can see some of the other things, recitation, tutoring. Okay. I asked the students, uh, tell me uh, your preference for a, collaboration, a collaborative technology, a collaborative tool. And you'll see here that, interestingly enough, 50% uh, of them chose email. And I really need to look into that one because that doesn't have much social presence and it's not necessarily a rich media tool. But again, I'll talk about this in my summary. 
The second highest was Google Apps, which certainly can be a collaborative technology. And then we get into things that you see that where web conferencing is, the cell phone, uh, and so forth. I had some other technologies listed, like Second Life, and no one chose Second Life as a collaborative technology. Second Life has an amazing social presence in it, and it is a very rich technology, so that was surprising to me. Okay. Um, I did a, a, a semantic differential thing to measure uh, social presence in Adobe Connect. So these were on a scale, uh, if uh, the technology is considered to be personal, social, sensitive, or gives you a warm feeling in working with others, uh, then, it, uh, then it has uh, more social presence, okay? Um, they rated the cell phone as the highest in social presence, which is interesting because I can't see the other person, okay? Uh, Adobe Connect was rated medium in this uh, differential scale, okay? Um, the cell phone, for, person, for being personal, the cell phone was followed by email. For social, the cell phone was followed by Adobe Connect. You see a theme here on cell phone. Sensitivity, <laughs> cell phone followed by email and warm feeling, cell phone followed by Adobe Connect. So students here really love their cell phones, I have to say. Okay, participation. Now, this is interesting because I asked them about participation in Adobe Connect before I asked them about participation using other tools or, or other strategies. 72% felt that Adobe Connect allowed them to participate fully in what they were doing such things as uh, project activities, group assignments. But of course they felt that participation was better face to face. Then on the next question, I asked them to compare their participation with other things. And you can see here that they felt they had full partici participation in face to face, cell phones and email. Less participation in Adobe Connect and a discussion board and little participation in a wiki. Isn't a wiki tool built for participation, isn't that? So uh, when I talk to some faculty around here, they say, I want students to participate and collaborate in a wiki, but what the students do with it? They do the thing that I did when I was an undergraduate. We all picked a chapter and wrote something separately, and then we put it together. That's how they're using a wiki, and that's why they're feeling that it, uh, they're not doing very much participation and not really using it what it's made for. Again, you're going to hear my theme at the end about that. Okay, difficulty in working on projects as compared to face-to-face. -face. Here's the cell phone again. This cell phone is everywhere, everywhere in my <laughs> survey. They say it's about the same as face-to-face. -face. More difficult, Adobe Connect, email, wiki, and discussion board. Okay, students agree that uh, Adobe Connect can support multiple learning and working styles, and I described in the survey what a working style was. I figure people knew what learning styles were, so I didn't describe that. But there was pretty high agreement that Adobe Connect could support those things. Ease of use, 71% thought that Adobe Connect was easy to use. But later on in the comments, they said it wasn't so easy to use. So I'm a little confused here. So I think I have to break that down and uh, do some further investigation. Task difficulty, 92% felt that Adobe Connect make, made the assignments and other tasks more difficult to complete, okay? Technology issues that made Adobe Connect difficult to use for assignments and other tasks. Learning curve, they felt there was a learning curve and that, uh, remember a few slides ago, they said it was easy to use and now they're saying there's a learning curve in Adobe Connect. Audio has always been a problem in Adobe Connect where sometimes we use, an, uh, where we use a bridge. Some students are actually using audio in Skype instead of the audio in Adobe Connect. Uh, they use Adobe Connect for sharing and doing some of these other things. Uh, drawing in Adobe Connect, we actually uh, have some students that in their, uh, in their assignments need to draw things. Well, the tool's not really made for that. It's really hard to draw in Adobe Connect, so I agree with that one. Synchronizing their work, they feel that it's not intuitive. Here's an interesting one, it's not well known. In the panel today, they were talking about uh, uh, in order to initiate and integrate these collaborative technologies, first of all, there has to be a culture for the technology. I don't think we're there yet. 
So I don't think that uh, Adobe Connect is that well known, and we need to work on that. Uh, not easy to share equations. I don't think it's built to put equations in there. And uh, this was used for uh, a programming class where they had to put a lot of equations in the, in the application. Not user friendly, unable to display document or text files. You have to use uh, flash paper to put different documents in Adobe Connect. Disappearing comments. This gets back to learning styles because as the students were commenting during the presentations, the, uh, the text box was too small and the things would quickly scroll off the screen so they couldn't read the other comments that were in there. Uh, difficulty in sharing documents. Unnecessary use of the technology. I think this is an important theme. Uh, and why? Because um, these technologies are built for collaboration, for problem solving. And then we have people that are using them to view their lecture in class and do these other things. And I think that kind of turns some of the students off uh, as far as why are we using this? Isn't there a better technology? And there are better technologies out there to do that. Okay, they were split on the ability to communicate in, uh, uh, in Adobe Connect. Um, and suggestion for, I asked them about, you know, what, well, give us some suggestions with dealing with issues. Uh, some of them want to communicate by voice rather than the text box. Uh, of course, there's this whole thing with audio and the background noise, uh, so you can see a lot of those things. And the last comment there, I think, is, is uh, interesting. It said, we couldn't do much. We tried establishing rules for the group, but it didn't work well. We changed to Skype for voice, but that wasn't much better, given that we had team members on several continents. Okay, interesting. Okay. 92% want to see the other person when communicating with them, but remember before they said that they feel that their favorite collaboration tool is the cell phone. You can't see the other person on the cell phone. So that's, that, that's very interesting there. 65% felt that their collaboration skills did not improve as a result of using Adobe Connect, and 68% want shared control during the session. 53% were satisfied with their Adobe Connect experience. Okay, so here, here are uh, some of my um, thoughts on the results. Certainly further investigation is needed to clear up some of these uh, uh, issues. First of all, th there, uh, I'd like to talk about theories. There is a theory of, of group cohesion. Uh, groups that work together well and have been established for a long time, uh, they can overcome uh, some issues like um, not using, actually if they would use a, a less rich technology, they can overcome that because they know each other so well and uh, they know how to work with one another. So you could actually have a group that's been together for a long time and they could actually uh, collaborate on their cell phone. So I'm not sure if that's what the issue is here, but um, it's, it, it's, an interesting, uh, it, it's an interesting thought. Uh, I think sometimes what we do when we establish groups in our classrooms is we switch them around during the semester and we don't build any group cohesion. And that might be a strategy to help them work, uh, work through some of these, uh, these other issues. Familiarity with the technology, we, you saw the comment where they said, this is not really well known. If it was better known, the students would grab a hold of it and you would see better results with it. And I think this is what we heard in the panel and this is what we heard from Joan a little while ago. You have to met, match the technology to the pedagogy, okay? You start out, I'm an instructional technologist, so I start, start out with a pedagogy and then I see what technological tools will support the, the, uh, the, the, techno, uh, the pedagogy. Um, I don't think that that's happening here. I think that uh, what's happening is people are just trying to throw a technology at some of the things that we're doing and it's not working out very well. And then the other issue, and this was sort of the thread that I was, I, I was telling you I was going to tell you about, uh, matching the technology to the task. Okay, if the task is quick transmission of information and data, you can use the less rich technology. However, if the task is collaboration, then you should be using a collaborative technology like Adobe Connect. You can't mix those up. But then we get back into the thing about group cohesion that can 
overlook that and overcome that. But I think one of the problems with using Adobe Connect here is that they're not matching the technology to the task. In other words, it's supposed to be a collaborative task. They're not using a collaborative technology or it's a data transmission task and they're trying to, uh, they're trying to use a, um, uh, a higher, richer technology to do that. Inappropriate use of the technology, I gave you some of the examples of that. There are some people that are doing other things besides broadcasting their lecture in the class. Uh, for example, they're using it for, uh, they're using the polling uh, in class uh, as a cheap way uh, to establish a clicker system. You probably know about the clickers in class. So I have students sit there with their, uh, uh, with their laptops connected to Adobe Connect and they're doing polling on there. And then uh, the uh, professor's screen is up there. They can see the results of the poll. Well, again, there are better te technologies for doing that. Granted, this is free to the case community, but there are better technologies. Okay, the other thing is, uh, in doing a, liter uh, a literature review, I found out in the corporate world, sometimes it takes a corporation up to 10 years to establish collaboration with their teams. And it gets even more complicated, more complex when you do things with people that are from different cultures or from different countries. We do a collaboration, we give the students a collaboration tool with no background or training in collaboration whatsoever. And then we expect them to be expert collaborators or we, accept, we expect them to solve problems, do their assignments and all these other things in Adobe Connect. I don't think that's right. I think we should say, you know, here's the way you collaborate. Let's build your collaboration skills up first, and then we'll give you the tool to be able to do that. So I see that as a real, a, a real issue with it. Okay, how'd I do on time? Pretty good. So we have time for questions, and uh, if you would, if you have, a, if you have a question, if you would please come up to the microphone so that everyone can hear. <coughs> Uh, Mace, I assume that in all situations you were talking about students who were using Adobe Connect somewhere outside of the classroom, not in the presence of the instructor? Uh, no, in some instances it was in the presence of the instructor. And in other instances it was for group projects of which the instructor did not, was, was not a member. Right. It just seemed like there would, did you notice a difference between when you know, there was a regular classroom and everyone had a laptop and they were using Adobe Connect. Our, our, one, of, one of the first presenters today, um, Wyatt Newman, was talking about his engineering class where he was able to have all the students watch a very complicated process. Right. He was using Adobe Connect, but then they could also talk to each other. Would, right. That would seem to make a difference, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, I would, I would imagine that it would. Uh, again, I, I would say there are better technologies to be able to do that, especially here at Case. Uh, hi, um, I, I'm wondering about the whole issue of sort of, you know, um, the sort of peer reinforcement for using technology that, um, you know, when, uh, you know, proprietary product like Adobe Connect is used, it is a very small user base and you don't have the benefit of, you know, peer instruction. I mean, kids have no problem with Facebook because if they have a problem, they ask somebody and they get an answer. And that helps reinforce it and uh, become, they become very comfortable with that technology. And some of it's, you know, with a add-ons it's kind of complicated actually but you know they're kind of fearless about you know trying new things I'm just wondering whether the whole um, you know I appreciate the corporate support for this conference you know that's great but um, Adobe has a major presence here but I'm wondering whether that tool um, isn't a, just a little bit too specialized to accomplish um, the goals that we have in getting our students to be comfortable and using the technology as sort of a natural extension of their activities I mean uh, I mean and uh, in my setting, you know, we've looked at a lot of different products and we've kind of said, well, you know, Google Apps is like ubiquitous. It's everywhere and people choose it voluntarily and it can accomplish maybe not 100% of what Adobe does, but maybe 80%, 90%. I'm just wondering whether or not, you know, we're sort of boxed ourselves in here in terms of using these very high-end, very capable products that are sort of originally designed for a corporate environment, try to move them into an academic environment. The strategy was to put it out there and see what students and faculty would do with it. Now, was that the best strategy? I don't know. The other, the other thing that I find, and I see this uh, time and time again, 
as somebody once made the comment, they said students are proficient with technology, but they're not literate. Mm -hmm. And if you want an example of that, you can look at YouTube. You look at the, the videos that people put up on YouTube, and they're proficient at using the camera, they're proficient at doing things, but it's not really a video production like we would want. So it's the same thing with some of these other technologies. They're proficient at the technologies, but they're not necessarily literate. And it gets back to my comment about if we want students to use a collaborative technology, maybe they should know what collaboration is first and how you work in a collaborative team first before we lay that over uh, a tool. Um, I have a question about the population. Were there any students that were distance learners? Because I've been using Adobe Connect to reach out to distance learners, and it's wildly successful. And I get very positive feedback. But I can't really see, you know, matching the task to the technology, how it's that useful in a face-to-face -face environment. Uh, here, we don't have that many distance uh, courses. So a lot of these things are uh, enhancing face-to-face. Uh, -face. Do you use anything like that? We don't have distance courses, but I've seen the success of Adobe Connect in situations where we're with remote, many remote located um, participants and that presence has been successful. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle. I'm actually a graduate student here at Case. I was one of the people who answered that. Um, sure. Uh, to give you a little more background for uh, the business school, the executive MBA program I'm in, uh, nobody did come in to give us any Adobe Connect training. I sought it out. There, was a, there were particular classes here at Case, but you had to seek them out. So I did that. I educated my study group on how to use it. We use it so that weekly we can get together remotely as opposed to in person. So that's how we use it. And perhaps the reason you got some different uh, answers to those questions is because just because Adobe Connect has video opportunities, that doesn't mean the students are using those capabilities. So when they're answering the questions, is Adobe Connect rich and yada yada? It might be just how they're using it as opposed to what it can do. And that might express, you know, uh, answer for the dichotomy between it. Yeah, very good. Uh, usually uh, after I do a survey and I collect data like this, <clears throat> I usually have either uh, uh, focused interviews or focus groups. So I don't know whether you'd want to participate in that or if you know other people that would. I like to get, you know, what's behind the numbers, what's behind all this stuff. So probably, <clears throat> it's probably too late in the summer, but probably beginning of the fall, I'll try to get some focus groups together and find out what's going on here. I want to speak to your first point, because I'm in the middle of a Sakai portfolio pilot, and we did a very mini pilot, but the, we had a roll out quickly. I'm so sorry. That thing is black and it's blending <laughs> my peripheral vision here. Um, the, the upshot was everyone wanted more context. And we also found out the second thing about what um, Trent was saying, uh, what um, Mace was saying about cl uh, collaboration skills was true of reflection. What is reflection? You know, in the pilot that came across that there, that there was not necessarily a common understanding of what was expected or how to. So it was a combination of not having a, an adequate orientation that we're changing for the next phase of our pilot and also encouraging faculty to, to speak more directly to those reflection skills. And I think it applies to using um, this for collaboration. What I find interesting, not only were the students not engineered on Adobe Connect, uh, but the faculty are not either. And so in the program, well, in the program that I'm in, which is supposed to be half distance, half in person, uh, the distance lacks. Uh, that doesn't mean that it can't come full collaboration, but I think that if there was more uh, dedicated to educating the educators on how to use it, in addition to educating the students and actually having class time in that process, you're going to have a lot more success in this. We have time for one last question. Sure. John, and I actually have two questions, but I'll keep them short. Um, the first question, I noticed in your slide that you made a distinction between uh, telepresence and teleconferencing, and I was curious what the difference between the two is. And the second question, in a previous life, I was a project manager, IT project manager, and spent a lot of time managing groups uh, that were 
geographically spread out all over the place trying to get them to collaborate. And I found that the, the two critical factors in getting uh, people to really engage with the tools was, number one, familiarity with the tool, which I, I suspect is why email was so popular because everybody understands email. It's, it's a very um, familiar, comforting um, environment for a lot of folks. And number two, I found that, that having people meet face-to-face -face at least once where you establish that relationship and that rapport, um, even if it's just once, can make a huge difference in terms of how effective these tools are in allowing the group to continue to collaborate. So I guess maybe that was more of a statement than a question, but anyways, thanks. Telepresence. Yeah, telepresence. So the idea there is you saw these people were sitting, I mean, it's one thing to have a screen and see a person's face on the cell phone and Skype on your laptop, but this was an attempt to make them feel that they are truly present in the room. S proportion, sitting at a desk, the monitors are placed at desk height. So after a while, when you're in that environment, you kind of forget that they're two-dimensional and start reaching for the screen. And that's the idea, is to really increase that, that um, that feeling that you're together. And that, and, you know, there's been research done about pre that social presence and just t telepresence itself, that that makes a difference. Okay. Thank you.